Um, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. Uh, I grew up about 50, 60 miles east of here, and the Bay Area has always been where I live. Um, and uh, east of here is a farm is a farming community. It's very small. It's very uh, Midwestern. And when I grew up, I was uh, very interested in art, uh, very interested in creating things, building things. Uh, I, uh, I got a, a skill saw set for my birthday, and I was building dollhouses and lamps and uh, forts and tree houses and anything I could build. Uh, and uh, when I got older, I discovered cars about 12, and I was completely obsessed with building cars and racing cars, and my whole focus was on cars. Unfortunately, uh, that sort of precluded any kind of education. And uh, so in you know, speech class, I would draw cars, and in, uh, uh, in uh, you know, everything I did basically was to avoid being in a classroom, uh, but um, I kind of managed to get through high school because uh, a week before graduation, which I had four papers that were due that were not written yet, and I was coming back from the library and I got into a terrible car accident. Um, the car I was in was a race car, but it was legal on the street. I'd worked in, I was been working in a foreign car service, and I'd raced it. I'd been racing it, and it had a roll bar. It had uh, aircraft seat belts. It was, you know, SCACA approved to sort of withstand anything. Um, and um, when uh, I was making a left-hand turn, somebody was, I lived at the country, somebody was passing me at 90 miles an hour, uh, another student, and um, he hit me broadside. My car wasn't real big, small. And um, my car rolled seven times and wrapped itself around a tree, an event that obviously no human could withstand. And by some miracle, um, my seatbelt broke. I mean, it was a big, fat, you know, with lots of things, steel braces to the car, the whole deal. And uh, on top of that, I'd crushed my lungs when um, they came to pick me up, the ambulance guys said, well, he's not here. So, because I wasn't breathing, I didn't have a heartbeat. Uh, and uh, when they got me to the hospital, the doctor said, no, there's something there. And they pulled me back. And uh, when I was um, uh, in the hospital, I decided to change my life. I said, maybe racing isn't the thing for me. Uh, and uh, again, it's maybe it was a sign. Uh, a lot of people, all my friends, who went on to be race drivers, you know, you the thing is, you go get back on the horse. Uh, but for whatever reason, I decided not to get back on the horse, and I think it was because I spent a lot of time thinking about it in the hospital. So I decided to go on to junior college. I did get my diploma, even though the papers weren't done and nothing. They said because when I when the accident happened, which or when graduation happened. Um, they, the front page newspaper said I was dead, and they said he probably won't live and everything. So, you know, they said, well, we can't, his father is a good guy, and we don't want to just not let him have his diploma. You know, we would, that wouldn't be fair. So I got that. So I got it. And then I went to, uh, then I went to, uh, Modesto Junior College, um, and, um, college education in those days was free, except if you were in a private school. It was a great thing about California. And um, I started taking classes again. Well, maybe I'll take this, maybe I'll take that, maybe I'll find what I like. And I discovered social science, in particular anthropology, became very fascinated with it, started taking a lot of it. My major was anthropology. And um, the, uh, but what I really wanted to do, and I'd wanted to do it since I was a little kid, was to become an illustrator. Um, and when I said what I was going to do, rather than go to junior college, I said, Dad, I'd like to go to Art Center in Los Angeles and become an illustrator. And he says, nobody in our family is going to come become an artist. 
That is no, that's no way to make a living. Uh, and you can do it if you want, but I'm not going to pay for it. And knowing that I was, an, I was a bit of a slacker, he knew I was going to do that. But so I did go to junior college. I, my grades, I got really good grades there because I was learning things that I was interested in learning. And I was going to go on to San Francisco State to be, become an anthropology major. And again, uh, in the last year, we were going, my best friend who I grew up with, I was uh, three years old, and um, was going to go to business school at the University of Southern California. And in those days, the colleges themselves had the tests. So you had to go someplace to do the USC test. And he wanted to, he had, it, was in, it was in Stockton. He didn't want to drive up there by himself. And I said, hey, why don't you come and take the test with me and we'll do it? And he says, I said, I couldn't get into USC. You know, I got into to, uh, San Francisco State because it's a state school, and I, you know, I graduated with good grades, and I didn't get to go in. He said, I'll never be able to get in there. And he said, well, come and just come and take the test. You don't have to worry about it because you're not going to get in. <laughs> so uh, I took the test, and lo and behold, I got in. And I said, well, what am I going to put down as a major? I said, they don't, I'm not sure about their anthropology department. I'll just check it out. He said, well, they got something there, uh, a, a, a photography course, school. You know, cinematography. And I said, oh, well, that sounds good. He said, it's great. You know, it's easier than gym. It's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, you'll, it'll be fun for you. And it's what you want to do. Your dad will say, I'm going to USC. He's not going to ask you what your major is. <laughs> so I got to uh, USC, and I went to the uh, cinema, cinematography school. But it wasn't a cinematography school. It was actually a cinema school. And, of course, that was like, you mean you actually go to school to learn how to make movies? That's insane. Before that time, you know, I grew up part of the time before television. The only reason I ever went to the movies was to chase girls. I didn't know anything about this stuff. So um, I got there, and um, it was, again, in those days, I, I got in, I realized later, is there was only 200 students, and they were having a hard time filling the classes because nobody wanted to be a film student because there was absolutely no way on earth if you went to film school that you could actually get a job in the film business. Because the film business at that point was closed. All the doors were closed. Uh, you know, it had been created in uh, that industry, had been created around 1910, 1920. This is in the mid 60s. And, you know, nobody had ever gotten in. Uh, you had to know somebody, you had to be related to somebody. So film students were sort of misfits. You know, the girls from the dorm next door would always make a wide berth around us. <laughs> we were the ones that had long hair. This is in the 60s and beards and, you know, and we're never going to get a job except as a <laughs> shave off our beards and long hair and get a job as a ticket taker at Disneyland. So, um, but the one thing we had there, which is you don't find much anymore, is that everybody there loved movies. And I didn't really love movies when I got there. But as soon as I got there, the first class I had was a history class, and the other one was an animation class. And the other classes were, you know, Spanish and uh, physics and all those other things that I didn't take earlier. Um, but I got in there and fell in love with it. I said, this is really neat. And got to see a lot of movies that I'd never get to see here, you know, or in, in Modesto or even... Uh, I'd come over to San Francisco once in a while to see big movies, but mostly I'd come here to see avant-garde movies. Um, uh, you know, very, you know, artists that would make movies, uh, and I became fascinated with that. But, you know, it's not a way to make a living. You take all your money you earn and you put it into your movie. Uh, so I got there. They gave me an assignment to, they gave me one, one minute of film to test, to, to learn how to use the animation camera. It had instructions, make it go up, make it go down, make it go to the right, make it go to the left, all that kind of stuff. And I took that and made a movie out of it. And it was a one-minute movie. On They gave me one-minute film, made a one-minute movie. Put a soundtrack to it. Nobody had ever done that. And it was a sensation at the school. They entered it in film festivals. It won film festivals all over the world. It was a completely different way of looking at animation. And I said, I like this. I'm actually... You know, I'm, everybody was saying, you know, you're the best guy here. I said, me? And um, so after that, um, I became obsessed 24 hours a day, lived on coffee and 
Hershey bars. And, you know, that was my life. And uh, so um, my goal was to make these avant-garde films that I knew in San Francisco and to maybe work as a documentary cameraman and an editor because I liked that. I liked you know, I had no interest at all in making Hollywood movies or working in Hollywood or anything. I was going to immediately come back up here, San Francisco, and do what we do in San Francisco, which is sort of documentaries and, and uh, little experimental films. Um, but what happened is I won a couple of scholarships to go work in the studios, and I was always open to opportunities. I, you know, obviously in school, we all loved film. I loved film, and I, my attitude was I can make a film out of anything. You want me to do a commercial? I'll do a commercial. You want me to do an industrial film on vacuums? I'll do that. I can do anything. You know, I love film. You know, just give me a chance. Uh, so when they said, you know, come and watch them make a movie at the studio, come and observe for six months, I said, oh, okay, I'll do that and see what this is. Before rejecting the whole industry, I will at least go and see what it looks like. And I got two, two of them, one for Carl Foreman, who was one of the Hollywood Ten communists sent over to England. This was his first chance back in the United States, and he was making this movie, and he put a bunch of students on to make behind-the-scenes movies. Um, and... Uh, I made an abstract film. He wanted a film about the Wrangler, about the producer, about the director. And I made one about the desert. Uh, and, uh, and we argued about it. You know, I, the first month was just arguing about whether I don't want that movie. I said, well, you said we could make it anything you wanted. Now you're saying I can't make what I want to make? And uh, that one turned out to be the most successful of all those movies because the other ones couldn't get airtime. And mine was shown on all the networks and everything. And uh, on the other one... I got to Warner Brothers, where you normally got assigned to the writing department or the prop department or something, and they said, well, and as I was walking into the studio, uh, Jack Warner was walking out, and he just left, and he'd sold the company to a Canadian film company. The Canadian film company was a really small company, and they, uh, they're called Seven Arts, and they had a little film group where they would buy books and things, and they hired a UCLA f- film student, this was in Canada, to sort of turn the books into screenplays. And that little that student was the only student at that time that ever made it into the film business. And through that connection in Canada, he got to make his first little movie and stuff. And then he got a chance to do a, a bigger film, which was being made at Warner Brothers. It was the only thing on the lot. Everything else was closed down. And that was Francis Coppola. And it, the thing was, is you know, he said, well, we, we don't have any departments open, so you're going to have to go and watch this guy make a movie. I said, oh, I just did that with Carl Foreman. I don't think I want to do that again. I'm not really impressed with Hollywood movies. This is all, you know, but I said, okay, I'll go do it. Because in my tour, the animation department was closed down, but they had short-end films, pieces of films laying around, and cameras, and nobody was there. I said, well, I'll just go over to the animation department and make little animated movies, and they'll be a little better. <laughs> 